Crimson Apple, and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I'm actually glad that that last uh, interview didn't happen before the show because prior to that show, I've only seen you guys live through the internet. And watching that show just changed everything completely for me. So um, from, the, from what I've seen on the internet to that live show that we experienced at your EP release, like you guys stepped up your game a lot. So tell me about the process of becoming that live band that you guys are today. We've always wanted to be this big cinematic band when we play live. And mm -hmm. I feel like this past year or so, actually over a year, we've really been trying to figure out how we can make ourselves sound as big as we've always wanted to be. Right. And, you know, we've really upped our game as far as like tracks and arrangement and things like that. Um, we've really been working hard on just making our live show as big and as like hopefully cool as as we, we want it to be. And um, we actually started working with a music director. His name is okay. Zach Rudolph, and he really helped us. Um, he taught us how to like build sets, things like that. He gave us all this advice on gear and things we can use to make our sound bigger. So we've just really been working on that. And for this show, we wanted to make it like really awesome and basically the best show that we've ever done. So right. we worked really hard um, putting that set together. Right. Yeah, because yeah, it blew my mind because it's like you guys have been touring that High School Nation tour for some time now. So obviously you can't have that kind of setup. Mm -hmm. So like I really just wasn't expecting that. And just like each one of you, you know, stepped up your game with your performance, with your instrument. Um, I remember at one point I when you guys did the solo, when you walked back out, I went to your dad and I was like, where did Faith learn how to play the drums like that? Because that solo was crazy. And then you did your guitar thing. And like I was just like, what is going on here? So you know, as you guys actually brought people in to help you with that stage show, but like you guys learning your instruments more and you guys showing that to your audience, like what was that like? I think leading up to the show, we really wanted to, um, I guess, showcase our musicianship. Mm -hmm. um, so we spent a lot of time actually focusing on that arrangement and yeah. trying to hone in on everybody's parts and showcasing everybody's strengths. And um, I don't know, I just think it was just a combination of all the lessons, you know, we've had over the years and um, um, yeah, just just continuously practicing and, and working. You know, we have a long um, uh, rehearsal schedule. <laughs> you know, some <laughs> people say that we rehearse a little too much, but I think it's, it's worth it in the end. Live, yeah. Oh, thank it's you. Worth it. And one thing with Cardi, I'm going to put you on the spot because <laughs> you're the quiet one in the band. But like once that bass is with you, like I was like I was on your side when you guys started performing uh, that night. And I was just like, that's not her. <laughs> so, you know, what really happens once the bass is on you and you hit the stage? Um, I just feel so much more comfortable on stage, I guess. Mm -hmm. I can really like be myself and I'm confident because we put in all the hours of practice yeah. and I'm like ready to go and it's like my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> now I was listening to the old album, Hello, um, and I was trying to figure out, you know, obviously there's an evolution in sound, but I was trying to figure out what it was and I think you just mentioned it right now. It's You guys want it to be more anthemic, more cinema cinematic type of band and I think that's what was missing in the Hello uh, album compared to the EP, Somebody That's Out Now and I feel like all those elements are there. To the point that like whether I have the headphones on or not, I still feel like that loud music playing. But you know, what did you guys go through in order to evolve from Hello to Somebody EP? Yeah, you know, um, when we did Hello, it was really um, a DIY album. It was basically our first project. Uh, we were back in Hawaii. We were still really kids, I mm -hmm. would say. And um, a lot of the music that we did on that album was very much... Uh, part of our growth period like right. it's literally from the time we started as a band together started writing together and to the time that we um, released that album it was really us learning how to play our instruments and us learning how to songwrite and that's kind of how we view that album mm -hmm. and as much as we love that album and we're proud of it we always knew that we wanted to do more than that like better than that okay. and so when we moved to LA um we just experienced a lot of new things. We got to see a lot of new bands. Um, we got inspired by different music, mm -hmm. um, more on the pop side. We listened to a lot more like big rock. And um, for us, um, we just took that and we started to learn and grow as songwriters. And we started writing about our experiences. I think when we were in Hawaii, um, we were always pretty sheltered. We, mm -hmm. you know, we lived in, in paradise basically. Right. And now that we're in LA, we're experiencing a lot more life and we're living and I think we have a little bit more to write about pursuing our dreams and things like that. Now, are you guys all writing collectively, or is it? Are you guys doing individual stuff depending on your instruments? Uh, Shelby. 
um, yeah, we write very collaboratively. Um, you know, usually it'll start with one small idea from the band. It could be mm. like a guitar lick, uh, like a melody or some kind of cool um, song title or lyric. Right. And we'll bring it to each other and we like to really write the songs together. And we feel like um, as a group, we come up with a lot more interesting music when we pull together as a, as a team. Because, I mean, we mm. do all kind of write separately, but we know we notice that when we um, bring it together, the songs turn out so much better. Right. Yeah. Now, as far as the lyrics go, like, how do you feel your evolution in songwriting has been? Oh, I, f I feel like we've grown a lot. You know, as Shelby said, you know, when, when we did Hello, we were still kids. And mm. so we were kind of still figuring out what we wanted to say and what we wanted to write about. And um, since coming to L.A., I feel like we've had to grow up really fast. You know, we've experienced a lot in a short amount of time. And, you know, we're lucky because we've been able to kind of lean on each other through it. Yeah. Um, but we definitely have a lot more to say. And I think that definitely um, has helped us grow in our lyric writing for sure. Now, vocally, because you guys have been doing this for quite some time, so you guys kind of grew in the music. So vocally, how do you feel your vocals kind of changed throughout these like years of, of releasing new music, and especially now with this new EP? Um, I, I hope I've grown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I listen to Hello, I... I, I I feel like I sound like a baby, you know? <laughs> it's it's so weird to go back and listen to old recordings or old demos, yeah. and I'm like, wow, I used to sound like that, you know? Because as you're, as you're going through it, you know, you don't always notice, like, the um, progress you've made, but mm. then when you kind of look back is when you realize, oh, okay, you know, I've... I've grown a little bit, like I've kind of stepped up. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> what, when, I, when I'm listening to Hello, I actually pictured like back in the day when I would listen to like Hey Monday or, or you know, bands of that caliber, like early Paramore. Yeah. So it was like, it's kind of cool to see like how you guys have grown so much since. Um, now, I love that you guys started out with Shower. Um, I feel like that's such a great, like, energetic song to open up the EP, and you guys did that also on the live show. What was it about Shower that made you guys want to place it as the first track? Oh, um, I think for Shower, uh, we just love how kind of dancey it is. Mm -hmm. You know, when we opened the show, we want it to be energetic, and we want people to um, have something to kind of groove to. And yeah. so when we um, started writing our set, you know, we were looking at all our, all our songs, and we're like, okay, well, this one's kind of mid-tempo, and somebody definitely is not an opener. And so we're like, okay, shower. And so we kind of built out the intro for that, and yeah. we had a lot of fun with that one. And then Mr. Maker's is the one that, like, draws my attention. I love that it has this, like, electronic kind of sounds and like undertones in the background um where did that inspiration come from yeah you know um that song it's always been when we first wrote it we knew that it was very special to us mm -hmm. but um it was very it was always very rock like we knew that we were gonna have to bring it to this new realm yeah. if 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 we wanted it to be you know accessible to more people and so we actually did this thing we worked with a producer named florian and um, basically, uh, we rewrote the song and then we kind of like went back and forth with him and we really told him like we want to do this and we gave him all of our inspiration bands and he kind of listened to that and he helped us build that sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you feel like because you guys incorporated more of like the, like, I get, what would you say? Is it more of a grunge type of sound? Because it's not just like EDM electronic type of sounds. Um, it's more like when you listen to Nine Inch Nails, you listen to some of their sounds and, and their records. But now that you guys incorporated that, do you feel like that kind of pushed you to play drums differently? Um, yeah, it did. <laughs> I think going into this, we were definitely trying to find, um, you know, because after Hello, we were definitely trying to find a mix between a produced sound and like still our live like band sound. Mm -hmm. So um, it, I definitely had to approach it differently. Like I talked to all the producers and um, I told them what I wanted production wise and like we would send them over demos and then we actually did some like demo production of how we wanted the electronic stuff to sound. Yeah. And then um, like in the studio, I would record uh, everything separately as if I had like, so I would record the kick and the snare and then I would record the hi-hat and then I would record all the toms so that I, we could get like a really clean sound that we could like, so that we could take things out or we could put things in as far as like production goes. So mm -hmm. it was definitely. Now, is, that, is, that, is that one of those tracks that like now comes naturally to you to play or is that something that you're still trying to figure out how to play? Um, I think it, it, it's, it's pretty like easy to play. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I think Cause it, it's still like the same beat that it always was. We mm -hmm. just sort of like we simplified it actually mm -hmm. oh, from really? what it okay. first was. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think one thing that um, I really like about our live shows is that when you listen to the EP, 
we have we we did it in such a way that it sounds really good recorded mm -hmm. but when we do it live we change things up we make the drums a lot bigger we make the right. guitars and the bass a lot bigger and that way um when you come to our live show uh it's something different than you've heard yeah no i like i said like it it just all comes together especially the huge stage that you guys had <laughs> like i i was like I was not expecting that type of live show. So congratulations on that. Um, another song that really got to me was Sorry Now. Because um, you really got to like give us some attitude on it. Yeah. So, um, you know, tell me about creating that song and, and how that song is for you to perform. Um, yeah, so Sorry Now is actually a really personal song for us. Um, the four of us actually, um, what's the best way to say this? We experience someone who really took advantage of us mm -hmm. and really um, kind of manipulated us. And um, after this experience, we were in such a low point, like we didn't know, you know, how to handle it, how to deal with it. And yeah. so we sat down and we did the only thing we knew, you know, how to do. And we just started writing this song and the words just came like flowing out, you know. And then when we um, started actually arranging um, the instrumentation, we knew like we wanted it to sound <laughs> angry, we wanted to have attitude and we yeah. wanted, this person probably doesn't know that the song is about them, but we wanted, if they were hearing it, that we wanted them to feel like our, our emotion and our power, you know, yeah. after going through that. So well, I felt it. Oh, good. That was the goal. <laughs> I felt it. Now, Carthy, with the bass lines that you wrote for this EP, like what, how did you feel like you challenged yourself this time around? Um, it was definitely really interesting having to write with all like the new production because there's a lot of like synth bass and like other synthi synthesizers yeah. <laughs> that I had to like work around and write around. So it was really fun having to like challenge myself and figure out how to write around it and write with it. And that was like just a whole new challenge for me. And it was really fun. <laughs> was there a particular song on this whole EP that kind of challenged you guys the most? Like m might have not made it to the record? Hmm. <sighs> I feel like maybe not, not might not have made it into the record, but a song that I feel like really challenged us was Somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because it was the very first song that we finished for the EP. And it was the first song um, where we, we were implementing our new like sound and our new right. ideas. And we were working with the producer for the first time. Um, and for us, like it was really, um, a starting point, but it was also something new for us that we were trying to to figure out, like how to do this. How much of the production do we want? How much of the band do we want? And I think right. that song really um, set a tone for the rest of the EP. Now, do you guys feel like this is the sound for Crimson Apple? Or are you guys still trying to figure out what's next for you guys? Um, I definitely feel like that is our sound for right now, but yeah. we're always going to be evolving and growing. Like we've already started working on new demos and <laughs> we're, we're, we're you haven't even toured this EP yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're already exper experimenting for the next project. So we'll see yeah. what, what comes out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations with the EP. I really love it. I literally went on a road trip last two weeks ago when it dropped and I was like, this is what I'm going to listen to like as much as I can. <laughs> so it was perfect. So thank you for that. Now, yesterday, Avril Lavigne announced a North American tour. What are the chances you guys could maybe hop on this? Because, I mean, I didn't see any openers on it yet. Oh, my God. Uh, that so. would be amazing. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. I think that would be the best way to introduce Crimson Apple. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing. And, I I mean, for me especially, like, I used to listen to Avril Lavigne, like, in high school. And, like, I would, like, <laughs> yes, I would sing along to, like, all her songs. <laughs> like, that would be amazing. Well, we got to figure something out and make it happen. Because the tour just got announced yesterday. So I'm sure there's nobody lined up <laughs> to be openers or to go on tour with her. So. Nice. <laughs> All right, so thank you for reuniting with me. We got to do this again soon. I got to catch another live show because that was amazing. But you guys be sure to check out Crimson Apple, their new EP, Somebody EP is out now. Thanks for watching on Front Row Live.